I'm out here in Long Beach at the Veterans Stadium for the uh, Long Beach High Performance Swap Meet again. Uh, we came to this last month and checked it out. Looks like there's actually more cars here this month because the weather's probably a little bit nicer for uh, going out and hitting a swap meet. Um, I did buy another car yesterday, so I'll be talking about that in this video. Also, I saw something I've never seen before on Waze on the way down here. Someone reported a roadkill, and it's got a little cartoon of like an animal with like X's on its eyes. So I'm going to overlay that on the video right now. I've never seen that before. Just something kind of funny for your, uh, for your for in the morning to see on a Sunday morning. Uh, but let's go check out what's here at the swap meet. Here's a uh, here's a Chevrolet that's for sale. A lot of stuff's either for sale or not for sale. A lot of stuff's uh, uh, in a show type thing. This one could be yours for uh, $33,000. So apparently you get more doors for the money. Um, that's my opinion, by the way. So, but uh, yeah, looks like a nice car, but uh, it's a lot of doors for $32,000, in my opinion. Uh, we're gonna come over here, check out this uh, Toyota. These are actually getting, well, they've always been popular, but uh, of course with Radwood and uh, Malay's days, it still has the old sunset plates on it. I don't know what he's asking for it, but uh, here's a square body. This one's 16,500. Uh, so last week, so as I was saying, I picked up a 1959, well, I didn't pick it up yet, I paid for it. 1959 Ford Galaxy. I wasn't in the market for another car, but when you find a 50s two-door hardtop of any sort without any rust for mid three figures, you generally need to go get that thing. So I got a smoking deal on that one. Uh, that'll be hitting the channel. I'm guessing my Ranchero is going to be hitting Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace because uh, I really wanted another 59 Ford because I had one years ago. I had a Fairlane two-door hardtop, but it's uh, long gone now. So um unfortunately but uh we're getting out here checking out the uh, show hopefully next week i'm gonna be going to palm springs grabbing my car trailer hitting a show out there i don't know if i'm gonna try to get the ford next sunday or go hit pomona yet i haven't decided and then go get the uh ford on another day it's all kind of up in the air uh but yeah just what i need another project when i said i'm gonna sell something and get to the 40 something else pops up that's usually how it works so and that one I'll be storing over at my old shop. I'm just as confused as you are. And the guy even threw in a bunch of 78 records. Like I just, I was over there talking to the guy for like two hours. Mentioned I like records. So he's like, hey, I got a bunch of 78s. I'll just give them to you. And there was uh, even a copy of Blueberry Hill, uh, Fats Domino, and The Platters, My Prayer in there. And, and a lot of blues, a little bit of blues, stuff like that. And of course, all your normal 78 type stuff like your Glenn Millers and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of exciting. That'll be on my other channel, Mike Finds Things, where I do all the collectibles and records and stuff I find that isn't automotive. Uh, and the 59 Ford will be on this channel. So that's where that's going. Oh, I'm a little caffeinated this morning, you can probably tell. Here's a uh, Corvair. So yeah, we filmed the uh, good guys meet last week. I went down there. And uh, I usually say the bigger the meet, the more interesting the comments get. So one guy didn't like the commentary on the cars. I say, just turn the audio off. I watched another guy who did a video down there without commentary, but with that non-copyright YouTube music that everybody uses in their videos. That's pretty generic sounding. Um, and honestly, it about put me to sleep, so. I'm going to keep doing the commentary, sorry. You can always turn the volume down. I'm sure your device has a volume switch of some sort. You can turn up your Perry Como or your Pat Boone or whatever music you like to listen to and sit back and look at a bunch of cars. But, uh, I think there's a lot more to get through. I'm looking for a steering wheel for the 59 Ford as well because for some reason the steering wheel is missing of all, of all things. we got to get a guy waving us there. <laughs> It's a very nice bump side. I probably shouldn't have had the caffeine this morning. But that's okay. <laughs> I'll calm down eventually. Check out this is a nice pickup truck here. It's Chevy. Oh, that's the excitement of my week. And I had my kid home all week because like a couple kids at her school unfortunately tested positive for something that's very bad. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. 
And uh, so they kept all the sixth graders home all week. And I had to take her down Friday and get her tested. And fortunately, it came back negative. So she'll be back at school on Monday again. So kind of some scary stuff there, though. Since you got this Pontiac. I think this was, wasn't this in the last video? I think I've seen this car somewhere before. We'll show it again because it's a really, really pretty example. Yeah, so, and of course, Ontario put out a new line of classics, uh, so I wasn't able to go out and film it on Friday, but I think there's like a 56 Rambler and 61 Biz Kane, some pretty cool stuff they got in that definitely should not be in the junkyard. But uh, didn't get around to going out there and filming it. If I go out there today, I bet you most of the good stuff's pulled off the car and they're probably unrecognizable by now. Check out this Model A rolling through. Yeah, I've already showed this uh, C10. It's a very clean example. It's a nice uh, with a 396 and a uh, 65. Super Sport. So if anyone out there has a 59 Ford steering wheel, I don't care if it's cracked, just as long as it or, use, it's usable, or 59 Edsel's the same wheel, just with a different uh, trim ring. I'm looking for one. If not, I might just put a generic wheel on it, because it's it's actually got power steering, so I could run like a generic Grant wheel or one of those for now. I just need to get it out of there. That's that's the key right now. It's sort of an interesting car. It's a 59 Galaxy two-door hardtop with a straight six. So from the factory, straight six automatic. So it's like a top-line car with a bottom-line motor in it. So. Got these uh, short bed Fords. Oh man. I think I'm gonna have to barrel through these or this video will be very long since there are a lot of cars this time. And a lot of trucks. So next week I'll be out in Palm Springs for casual concourse out there. And I have the 56 Cadillac that was my father's. It's, it's actually stored out there, my friends, because it's very scary to drive 56 Burritts in uh, LA. So I store it out at Chuck's and uh, I'll be taking that to the show. And that car has never been on the channel. So it's a car my father bought i believe it was about 99 or 2000 somewhere thereabouts he bought that car and it's an older restoration it, of course it's it's eye candy being a cadillac uh 1956 cadillac so you guys will finally be seeing the mythical 56 uh El Dorado. I think I have to move out of the way here. I think this guy's just lost. That guy's actually got a Mercury uh, marquee, looks just like mine, but uh, I decided not to park in the show area as uh, I don't feel people really want to see my Mercury Grand Marquee right now. Actually, it's going in for uh, some paint work this week as I was rear-ended about two months ago. And uh, 
It's taken two months. The guy who rented, well, actually rented a car which, which ran into me. The guy doing the rear ending didn't want to even talk to his insurance. So it's been a continuing process. Long story short, they finally, his insurance finally said, okay, take it in, get the back bumper painted. Unfortunately, it's not a whole lot of damage. But, uh, Working hard. Hey, there's Bob. <laughs> It's a beautiful car here. Could be yours. For a great price of. Yep. <laughs> okay. Come back later, the sign will be on. Okay. Uh, plenty of cars here for sale at the Long Beach High Performance Automotive Swap Meet. It's a California special Mustang. I'm old enough to remember when you'd see these on the streets. First time I saw one, I was like, is that a Shelby? Yeah. I think that's what a lot of people do when they see these. But, uh, nope, it's a California special. And how about a Bustleback Malays era Cadillac Seville, Elegante edition, with a moonroof. And it's got the, uh, Custom Rolls Royce style grill. These grills, if you ever see them at Pick Apart, they, they bring a lot of money, I have found out. My friend Nick yanks those whenever he can. And even for like the baby uh, DeVilles and Sevilles and things like that, for like the later front wheel drive ones, like uh, they're actually quite popular. So. Amani SS. Blazer. Shoot. Either a dart or a duster. That was a duster. Plum crazy. I think so for what it is. This one's uh, twenty-five thousand, but as Mopar prices go, I, 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 that's probably there. In fact, the guy I bought the Ford from has a '73 Roadrunner that's pretty original. It's a nice car. He wants like fifteen thousand. So, if you're interested in one, let me know. I'll try to get to this guy's information. I actually forwarded it to a friend of mine. Here's a uh, Continental Mark III sitting on uh, Astro Supremes. With the uh, shagged out dash. It's got the pipe organs on the back. Pinstriping. Another Model A. So there's a lot of cars in here now. I'm not sure if there's any other car shows today to hit. I, I looked on the calendar. I know there was like a Murrieta rod run, but I, I was busy yesterday buying a Ford. Uh, that was the last two days out in Murrieta, and then there was the Doheny Woody show, which I said I was going to try to hit, but I wasn't able to hit it. And last week there was just sh like all kinds of shows. It's like every seems like every show, all these shows in Southern California hit last weekend. Of course, the biggest being the good guys meet. Look at this '57 Safari. I think we've seen that one before here. And this Grand Prix. This one's a uh, twelve thousand. I'll play nice this time. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the G bodies are very popular. 
and ever increasing in value. It's a very nice original looking pickup. This one's 25,000 1940 Chevrolet. I'm actually back shooting on my phone this time because uh, I don't know, I, I just figured I was going to walk around the swap meter hoping for a 59 Ford wheel and I didn't want to be lugging around my all my GoPro stuff. So a lot of times, it's, sometimes it's just easier to shoot it on the phone. Very nice El Camino. Complete with a club. And I think we're back over here again. Let's look at this uh, Ford pickup. With a bunny rabbit. Gotta have your lucky rabbit. Butterfly, a lot of little details on this one. Put in the hood ornament. And one of these uh, Eldorado Barretts convertibles from the 80s. Of course, they weren't factory, they were done, uh, I think the various companies did those conversions. And Mercedes Benz station wagon for taking the kids to school. The Cobra replica. Neat uh, old style pickup hot rod. Complete with a flathead. This guy comes through. Oh, I thought that was uh, Google Maps coming through. But it's, a, it's a Raiders helmet. I said, if you just glance out of the side of your eye, it, it would, like I just did, you would think it was like the Google Earth guys driving through. <laughs> but they don't tend to use El Caminos. So. I was like, what's that? And the Dodgers won last night, so go Dodgers. Anytime you can beat the Giants, especially when it really matters, is good. And by the time a lot of people watch this, they'll already know what happened because these videos even get views months, even years later. So, but uh, it's always nice to see the Dodgers in the uh, postseason. So. Monte Carlo Aero Coupe. Done for NASCAR. This guy's got the original window sticker. It was $17,000 back in uh, 1987. Now it could be yours for 28000 This one is 18,000 original miles. I can't imagine there's too many with uh, that kind of mileage. But uh, if you want an extremely clean original example of a Monte Carlo Aero Coupe, there it is. Remember when I was in Virginia in the Navy in the uh, early 90s, those, those were at a premium even then, since it's a big NASCAR country there. To this uh, bump side crew cab. I sold my 71 bump side a little too early. Check out this Willis Coupe. This was here last time. I remember talking to him. I think he just finished it. It's neat. It's a big vintage uh, dragster meet, I believe, next weekend as well in Pomona. So I might have to wait till the week to go get that Ford if I can, since there's two events that will likely do well for the channel. 
But eventually we'll get that Ford up. Supposedly it was running 25 years ago. It was last tagged in 1985, so the guy swears about 25 years ago they had it running. Which it's a Ford Straight 6, so as long as it's not locked, it should run. Like I said, this is a way more packed event than we saw last month here. It's got this uh, 63 Galaxy non-XL convertible. Had a chance to buy one of these about 20 years ago for a very reasonable price. And this color combination, and I still regret it. That was when they weren't really bringing much money. The 64 uh, Galaxy. It's a lot like one that a guy I know had, I don't know, maybe about 10 or 15, maybe the same car. He had one that color. An old Chevrolet, 1934. This uh, 57 Bel Air wagon. I had a 210 wagon like that at one point. Six cylinder, three on the tree. And I offered it to my then wife and she didn't want it, so I sold it. And, fellas, if you have a wife that you offer a 57 Chevy station wagon to and she doesn't want it, Mmm, that might not be a good thing. That's Mike's relationship advice for today. <laughs> See this old, I've seen this one around. A little Valiant convertible. I still have heard back from my buddy who bought the 65 Valiant that I uh, got running on the channel last year. That was one of our early pandemic uh, uh, projects. Got it for a good price. It didn't need a whole lot. I think it needed a starter, a relay, and just other things from being sitting a couple of years. Sold it to a friend of mine. He's restoring it, and I haven't heard back from him. I'm supposed to give an update on the car once uh, he's done some work to it. And uh, as of yet, haven't heard anything, but that was a 65 Valiant uh, two-door post. It's like a cheapie with no options. This was here last month. This one's got the uh, victory tag on the license plate from uh, the war era. We got the doll head. Everyone needs an air cleaner with a doll head on it. It's a Fox Body Mustang. over I'm gonna be working on my Fox body tomorrow doing the fuel pump not gonna video it there's probably like a hundred videos on how to do a fuel pump on a Fox body on YouTube already so that might be going up for sale I don't know something's going up for sale I don't know what yet not the 40 though
That's it. Oh, you got it for sale. Okay, we'll go see what he wants. Check out this. Okay, we'll put it on there. <laughs> if you can make it to, no, it's, by the time this video is up, there's the number. I'll put. He wants the number, so there's there's the number. So, what is it? October 10th of 2021. So, who knows when? When you see this video, depending on when you see it, it may or may not still be for sale. Oh man. It's a neat international pickup. We love our international harvesters here on the channel. I don't know why. I only one I ever owned was a Scout too, but uh, they're very funky and very cool. You gotta always appreciate farm equipment. I used to watch that show when I had cable, the classic tractor show. I don't know if you ever watched it. It was like on the RFD channel. I'm not into tractors, but man, I could watch that show like all day. I don't, I don't know why. My ex-wife used to make fun of me for watching that show. All right, you want a 68 Camaro really bad? Well, how about a really bad 68 Camaro? Here's a small block car, it's 327. But it looks like it was rolled or who knows what happened to this car. Look at those old wheels with the old, with the old, uh, with the old uh, poly polyester radials on that. I don't know why I can't talk this morning. But uh, this could be yours for $5,000. And I see prices like that, I go, yeah, I'll just stick to Ford and Mopar. All the Mopar stuff's getting pricey, some of it, but uh, especially the muscle car stuff. But, um, man, that car needs pretty much everything, including a drivetrain. Look at this Imperial. Ooh, it's Imperial Coupe. You never see those. Even the sedan, even the the, the, the four doors are scarce, but the uh, two doors are even scarcer. This car is very sharp. Oh, this is I believe Bob. Oh, this is Bob's car. That's Bob. We ran into her. That's his. I thought I knew this car. That's actually his car. So, just a gorgeous example. And check out this Malibu. There's a, a marquee very similar to mine. Except mine's out in the parking lot, like the spectator lot. They're actually great cars. That, that Crown Victoria, Lincoln Town Car. I owned a few of the Panther platform vehicles. They make great daily drivers. Parts are inexpensive. They're very reliable. And police and taxi, of course, use them. <laughs> the original 62. <laughs> Transporter coming through. The '66 Chevelle. So I don't know. I always say I'm a Ford Mopar guy. I've owned Chevys over. There. I've owned pretty much just about anything. Um, I've owned 257 Chevys, I had a 58 Chevy Bel Air, a 58 Chevy pickup, 60 El Camino, a 66 Impala, and I've had a bunch of C10s, C20s, so I've owned my fair share of Chevy products, I could say, but uh, currently I don't own any Chevys right now, <laughs> but uh, that's just kind of how it works out. I'd love a 59 Impala, I just can't afford it. Plymouth Business Coupe. Hey, go cut my truck, 
I got a 64 convertible. It's a nice uh, 56 convertible. I need to look. I got to see if I got a set of yellow plates for that 59 I picked up, the 59 Ford. I know I have a few sets in my basement somewhere. I'll have to run them through to see if they're clear. It does have black plates on it, but but uh, there's no paperwork on the car. It's out of the computer, but so I'm not going to be able to keep the black plates on it, unfortunately. It's a nice second gen Econoline. I did shoot a van meet last weekend, and uh, for some reason YouTube kept recommending it to people in countries where you wouldn't, where they probably aren't interested in van videos. So it really messed up the algorithm on that video. <laughs> it still got a lot of views, but a lot of them were pretty short because of the uh, the fact that, I think it was said 23% was United States where they recommended it to, which usually it's closer to 70 or 80% on most of my videos, since a lot of it is stuff people, United States, Canada, you know, places like that. I'm sure there's other countries, but it was recommending it in some countries might they don't normally recommend my videos I, I will say that can't think of which ones they are off the top of my head but this is neat this is the uh, this is a Nash there's actually uh, in Pasadena if you ever go to the Jaguar dealership on Colorado Boulevard it was a Nash dealer back in that era, and there's actually a plaque by the front door, a really neat old uh, Nash plaque that's still there from that era, the Honda 600 uh, sedan. These are called the sedan, and then the, uh, the coupe's the little tinier, the even smaller looking one. So they actually had two models of the 600. That's the one they refer to as the sedan. It's a nice uh, 64 Stingray. You can always tell the 64 because the hood has those indentations, but the 63 has it too, but with the with the faux, faux grills on it. And of course, the 64 doesn't have a split window like the 63 does. So it's really nice to see a good turnout here. I can't imagine what Pomona is going to be next week. I may have to grab the trailer, see if I can get the uh, Ranchero, maybe drag the Ranchero out there, see if someone's interested. If anybody's interested in a 64 Ranchero, it's got a title. I bought a lot of parts for it. It does run, it needs freeze plugs and exhaust and stuff like that. And I was going to keep it, but uh, that 59 Ford is just a little bit more appealing in my eye, in my taste. I really like this patinaed uh, Chevy, like a 50, 58, 59. This one's uh, 14,700. Uh, you know, it looks like it's out of Texas originally. It's got a Texas inspection sticker, so. Probably a pretty dry vehicle, and it's a short bed. Honestly, I don't think that is too out of line. I mean, I'm sure he's willing to bargain as uh, these patinaed vehicles have become very popular. Ironically, this is what I used to drive because I always thought they looked cooler and people used to give me hell about it. Now it's kind of like the thing. See, there's a patina at 64 coming in. A Mustang.
custom. That's a Plymouth? Yeah, it's a Plymouth, 1947. You can still tell it's a Plymouth in the front there. It's a 51 uh, Chevy for 13000 five years ago when these were cheap and plentiful <laughs> all of a sudden the world went nuts for those another Monte Carlo this one's original as well not an arrow no this is an arrow coupe I'm sorry I'm allowed to goof up now and then Let's see what this uh, Actually, you can't really see the interior on this one. This one, uh, no price on it. A oh, twenty-five thousand. That's what the guy was asking for the white one. That is a big shot. Yeah, that's gonna take. I'm not as familiar with the market on those uh, as the older stuff, but uh, obviously they're very collectible. I remember about 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, when you saw one of those, oh, it's, but it's not a Grand National. Now I, I think it's not as big of a deal anymore. Obviously the Grand National is big, bring a lot of money as well. Fox body. Little Chevy two wagon. And speaking of uh, Cadillac convertibles, this one is a '58 DeVille, and this one is fifty thousand dollars. See this guy coming through. I should just start shooting like lowrider events. <laughs> I seem to wind up at a lot of shows with lowriders. This one's a very nice 50,000. This might. I believe I've seen this car. This guy went to a Valley Cruise Night a few months ago with this. Let's have a look at the other side. It's all there. There's a neat Chevy Love. In a very 70s style. I'm guessing this was probably built in the 70s. In fact, look, he's got all these old stickers on there. This does look like it was built in the 70s. And, uh, sort of a neat piece of history. And a uh, Chevy Love. The sixty six Caprice. It's a nice suburban. 58 Impala. I think he rolled in and then we weren't paying attention. I 
I very nearly drove my van down this morning to see if I could park it in here and but it was early it doesn't have a heater it is a little chilly this morning oh it's warmed up since and probably the East Coast guys are screaming at me right now because it's California out here <laughs> But uh, that one, the heater doesn't work, and actually the air kind of blows through a little bit in the floorboard, if you will, when you're driving it, even with the little vent shut. So it's a 1950 for 20000 1940. Again for twenty thousand. The Corvette is rolling through again. Will he find a parking spot? Nope, oh, I guess he did. I'm gonna go around him. I think he's moved around a couple times. Ford uh, drag uh, truck. So next weekend, I'm guessing it might be another two video weekend. Well, I did three last weekend, three videos at four shows. So I combined two of the shows since they were at the same location last weekend. And then uh, hopefully I'll get something going up on that Ford once I once I get it settled into its location, and I I'm just gonna try to get it running. We'll see what it does. Fortunately, 59 Ford parts are so. I was saying 59 Ford parts aren't uh, too difficult to come by in general. They reproduce a lot of. They reproduce the gas tanks and things like that for those cars. This Falcon was here last month, actually. I think it was parked even in the same parking spot. It's a gorgeous car. Shows 56. Yep. I almost shoot these swap meets almost like it's a live stream, but I don't like the live stream because it really downgrades the quality of the video. So I'd rather just shoot it in 4K, upload it in 4K. That way it's a uh, it's of a high quality versus watching like grainy footage. seen this one. I think this was her last month as well, this little uh, Bronco uh, pickup. I'll be interested to check out the new Broncos at the uh, LA Auto Show. We're doing the uh, press preview days at LA Auto Show, uh, the automobility event. I've got a pass for that. And uh, that's one of the things I really want to check out is the new Bronco. I, I want to see the good one though, because the only ones I've seen on the street are that little Bronco Sport, the the like soccer mom SUV style one, which I think Ford might have missed the boat on putting those out first, because I know a lot of guys are really excited to see the Bronco, and that's like the first one you see on the street, and you're like, 
They're like, well, it doesn't look that good in person, but there's the other, the nicer Bronco model. And that one, uh, so, um, as I was saying about the new Broncos, it's, I, th I think they should have released the cool one first. Because I know a lot of people that saw it went, oh, I really wanted one until I saw it on the street, but it was like the sport, the one, the soccer mom looking one. So, I'm probably going to be checking out whatever they got. Hopefully they got some cool new vehicle unveilings. I kind of want to see the new Maverick, just because I've owned two of the old Maverick. My mother was actually thinking about looking at the new Maverick, and she's not really even a pickup truck person, so. In fact, I wouldn't mind finding another car like my Marquis to, for my mother, because she has a 2005 Chrysler 300 that uh, has your typical problems of Chrysler products of that era. He's got the T-Bird uh, scoop on this uh, 56 Ford. I don't think I've ever seen that done. Here's a really cool uh, Dodge Tradesman from the 70s. This one's the early 70s, you can tell by the grill. Austin Healy. Here's a Ranchero, so if you know anybody looking for a 64, I'm probably going to be selling mine. Would be my guess. Might be fun to drag it to Pomona and put some like ridiculous price on it and see what happens. But that would require some effort. Ooh, the J.C. Whitney Pep Boys Special. He must have hit the uh, closeout sale at Pep Boys this uh, Nissan here. This one checks all the J.C. Whitney boxes. Do you know that this Nissan was powered by Nissan? I had no idea. This uh, Corvair coming through. Don't forget, we're also, November's coming up. I got a lot of events. I think I mentioned the LA Auto Show. I've got SEMA, which, fingers crossed, I'll be able to, I, I have the badge. Um, I'm probably gonna have to go hit it for a day or two, come back for a day, and then we're off to, I'm off to uh, go to Lemons Rally, which starts in San Luis Obispo. And my friend Jimmy's got his 67 Imperial we're doing Lemons Rally in. Uh, I've got that, and then uh, Radwoods that month. Like the whole month's just full of events. We've got this uh, '67 Merc convertible for 19.5. So it's another second gen Econo. But um, so I got all these events coming up, and it's going to be a complete disaster. But I'll figure it out. So. Tons of stuff coming up in the channel. Lots of shows, trade events, things like that. And hopefully when I go to SEMA, I'll be finding out if there's anything going on with getting another bill introduced for the uh, smog exemption, because it's kind of like what this channel really was about, was I was doing videos about getting the smog exemption bumped up. We started the group Californians for Classic Car Smog Exemptions, which you can find on Facebook. 
And one of my buddies who knew a lot about YouTube says, well, if you want people to see those videos, you gotta start doing other videos about cars. So I started doing other videos about cars. And, uh, which actually does help get those smog videos uh, to do well. And it raises a lot of awareness because uh, the year's been stuck at 1976 and newer has to get smogged for what, a, like about 15 years now. More than that, like 16 years, I believe. So there's only a couple more rows of cars uh, to hit. So as I was saying about the uh, smog exemptions, uh, we keep getting bills introduced and we get a lot of people riding in and I know that the representatives are hearing a lot more since the group started because it's, it's gotten a lot of emailing and whatnot. But unfortunately, every time one of these bills are introduced, they don't get voted on. And I think the last time one got voted on, like the Sierra Club went down there and we are like, Oh, old cars are bad, old cars are bad, and that kind of got squashed. And of course, they never look at the numbers to see how many miles people are actually putting on these and that the majority of them aren't being used for daily use. But, uh, nope, they want to bring up the numbers as if they're all being used as if it was a brand new car. Unfortunately, unfortunately, people believe that for some oddball reason, even though you Everybody knows these cars aren't being used as daily transportation for the most part. And uh, that's kind of where we get stuck. But uh, so be sure to go to Facebook, join Californians for Classic Car Smog Exemptions. And next time one of these comes up, be sure to write in to your representative that you want to see the bill happen. If this is if you live in California. And uh, hopefully next time we can make something happen there. So we have a look at this uh, 67 GTO convertible for 59,000. I'm gonna have to kill the video as there's uh, some music. How about a Camaro Berlinetta, it's like a 87. Oh, it's an LT, it's a 10,900. But it's all brand new. It's, uh, in my opinion, that's IROC money, but that's my opinion, so. I say if you're gonna spend that much money, find an IROC. They are out there. It's like Fox Body Mustangs. You can still find deals on Fox Body Mustangs. I mean, obviously the prices have increased as they have on those 80s Camaros, but uh, you can still find them. Whereas these 60s Camaros, generally you gotta pay what you, what you, can, what you gotta get what you can get, so. They're a little bit more difficult to find a reasonable price on. This Ford. No price on it. It's like bare metal. You didn't even clear coat over it. Honestly, I think that when you clear coat over it, it looks kind of weird. It has that weird gloss to it. But uh, you don't want to leave it bare metal like that for an extremely long time, but or keep it garaged, I guess. There's only a few more lines of the cars. I'm going to go through the swap area. And I'll, if I see anything, I'll video it, but uh, usually there's not much I really need. It's a lot of... It's mostly Chevrolet stuff at this at this swap. And right now I'm looking for a Ford steering wheel <laughs> and a pile of Chevy, in a swap me full of Chevy parts, so. Not likely to find one. I actually put a feeler out to some of my friends in the Edsel Club, just in case they have an Edsel wheel, because it's essentially the same thing. But even though I kind of breezed through this, this swap meet, it's a lot of cars, so I mean, those videos are still going to be pretty lengthy. So if you're still sticking around, congratulations. I 
I really like this uh, 61 here. You're like, man, for a guy who doesn't own Chevys, I sure saw a lot of Impalas in my videos. <laughs> I've always been a fan of these. I'm just not a fan of uh, what they what they go for. <laughs> I think if I won the lottery tomorrow, I'd probably pick up a 59 or a 60 convertible, or even a 58. That, uh, that's a beautiful car. All right, we're gonna we have a few more uh, cars to go through here. I always like the headlight pods on these. I got a 69 Impala. This guy's got like two TVs set up watching like uh, football today. I suppose uh, it's one way to go. This guy sprung a leak on this uh, coronet. We got ourselves a puker. A uh, rabbit diesel pickup. Actually, the guy I bought the Ford from had a couple of these. I believe he, he said he already sold them, though. They were starting to leave. People get here really early, but it's kind of tough because I think around 8, 9 is the sweet spot when there's the most cars here to show. And of course, by then the sun is up. It's a custom uh, VW thing. It's been lowered. It's a clean uh, F series. This one's a uh, 150. One owner, $6,000. Honestly, as clean as that is. Depending on the mileage, it's, you know. All of those, I mean, those are, you can still find, look at that uh, Pontiac. Let's have a look at those. This guy pulls out in the uh, 64. when uh, it was back when they designed cars instead of just copying everyone else's and hoping for the best Five cars from where he was parked. Now, I think a couple of people asked me where you find out about a lot of these shows. If you go to like SoCal, what's it called? Uh, the SoCal Car Culture Calendar. You can actually Google it. Uh, most of the shows are posted on, not everything. I've gone to a lot of shows and different things that weren't posted on there. But for the most part, most stuff 
does get posted on. The van meets do not. And I think like the LA Cars and Coffee doesn't get posted on there for some reason. But a lot of the Cars and Coffees do. And there's usually something going on, but like I said, for some reason, a lot of times the, the good stuff gets clustered under the same weekends. So it makes it impossible to hit everything. In fact, today's also the Rose Bowl swap meet, which isn't cars, it's just like antiques, collectibles, and whatever. And uh, I kind of wish it wasn't on the same weekend as this every month, because it's near my house, and they do get a lot of records there. And uh, I kind of want to investigate, because I have a lot of records to sell. So I was saying, just go to like SoCal Car Culture Calendar. I believe there's one for NorCal, too. I think they then somebody else did a similar one for NorCal and they just list every automobile event as long as the, the organizer sends it to them or someone sends it into them. I've actually told organizers about it. I'm like, you didn't know about it? Because that's where generally where people check. Actually Pasadena has the police car show next Saturday. I can't go because I'm going to Palm Springs, but uh, that's usually a show I hit every year, but usually it's on Father's Day, and it's sort of been a tradition, even back when my father was alive, to hit that show, and I uh, just can't do it this year. And in fact, they put that show together in, in like a month. Like it was uh, almost put, but they get enough people who've returned to that show that they'll, they'll still get a good showing, especially people locally. But uh, it's always good to support your local shows. Keep them going. Bring your kids out like this guy did. Show them these cool cars. Buy the t-shirts, buy the raffle tickets, all that good stuff. But you gotta keep this stuff going. Okay, that's going to wrap things up here at the uh, Long Beach Performance Swap Meet uh, here at the Veterans Stadium. Uh, we're going to have a lot of cool stuff coming up for you. If you like collectibles and records and things, check out my second channel, which is Mike Finds Things. There will be a link in the description. That channel's kind of still getting going. Uh, and uh, we got good events coming up for you to show you on the channel. And until next time, I'll be seeing you.